Hello, Heart Rate Fam, and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm super, super excited to be here. I hope everybody had an amazing Labor Day weekend. It was really hot, but I hope that you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and drop an emoji, your favorite emoji that you had fun this weekend. Real quick before we start and I introduce you to my guests, I want to say that as a church, we're praying for all the people that have been affected with the fires. Um, we're praying for your families, for all the firefighters out there. We're praying for your families, and we're going to continue to keep you in our prayers. Um, so we're going to jump right into it. I'm super excited. We have Pastor Mark here. We have Raquel and we have my friend Josh. Um, you know, it's it, it's been an incredible weekend. It's been an incredible, incredible time. Uh, Pastor Abe is doing a series on the blueprint. Um, and I believe that the blueprint is so important because it takes us to the fundamentals of what it is to be in God's house and what it is to build God's house. Um, last week, Pastor Abe spoke about the house we are called to build, and it's getting us ready and getting our hearts ready. And this week, he preached a message on it's time to build. I think that, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, we, we think that just because we sit on the sidelines that things are going to happen, but it's not like that. You know, I believe that God anoints us and God chose us, but he doesn't want us to be in the sideline. He wants us to start building. Um, and, and I, and I want to get just right in, jump into it. And I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10, verse, uh, verse 3, verse 10 to 15. And it goes like this, and it says, um, because of God's grace to me, I've laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one that, are, that we already have in Jesus Christ. Anyone who builds on the foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, um, hay, and straw. But on judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person worked has value. If the work survives, the builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through the, through the wall of, fl of flames. Wow. What a powerful scripture. And, and, and it's so awesome that Pastor Abe read from this scripture because it gets us ready on building. And what we're building for. And, and I wrote a few things here for you guys um, that I want to ask you. Um, Pastor Mark, uh, you know, Pastor Abe spoke about what are we dreaming for. Um, and sometimes it's not enough to just dream. So I want to ask you, you know, you've been around for a long time. And what are you dreaming for in this season? What are you saying that I've been around for a long time? Is that, are, you, are you saying that I'm old or are you saying I'm, I'm a... I'm saying you're I'm, wise. You're wise. Oh, okay. Okay. Just double check. Just making sure. Making sure. Um, I, I, I took that as, um, as Pastor Abe reminding me personally, and this may, um, you know, uh, speak to the folks who are listening that have been part at least of Heart Revolution Church for a while, but it really spoke to me of dreaming again, right? Because in this new season, um, you don't build something because you um, are just wanting to, to see something new. You're building something because you feel like there's a cause behind it. You build shelter to protect you from the elements. You build on your relationship because you want it to grow. You build uh, into your uh, business because you want to become more successful, make more money to be able to, that's what I took it for. Like, like Mark, dream again, but remember what the foundation is. Well, wow, that's so awesome, and, and, and I agree with you. Um, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, people think that when people get older or they've been in ministry for a long time that, it, you know, you stop dreaming, but it's not like that. Um, we can learn so much from you. We can learn so much from the things that you guys have been through, and, and, and it helps us as young people dream and continue to dream. Um, Pastor Abe also spoke about, um, you know, how in life we go through trials, and, and those trials are what refines us. And I want to ask you, Raquel, you know, what, I want to ask you, Raquel, um, sorry, um, how do you handle times of trials and tribulations in your life? 
Yeah, babe. How do you handle it? <laughs> I just work out. No. <laughs> Seven hours at the gym. No, but I think that's a great question because before uh, we accepted the call to um, serve and be pastors for this church, we had a very, a marriage that was in the waters. And I think that God really allowed us to go through that because when you are involved in ministry, uh, God is a jealous God and he demands a lot of my husband's time. And that was something that it's a lot of times I questioned it. Am I ready for this? Do I really want this? Uh, how am I going to pursue with the calling of my husband being so much at church and me being with the kids? So one of the things that really helped me at the time is really partner up with someone that is in the same level to really allow you to vent, to really refocus you, and to remind you that it was not a calling that, that we chose, but it was chosen for us. So with that demand of my husband being away and with uh, me being at home and being my ministry at home, and having my husband share my husband, I'm also jealous. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I think one of the things that really allowed me to really stand on that ground of, you know, step into the place of comfort and really resilience in his grace and in his love. Yeah. How I did that was neology, always on my knees. <laughs> nice. I would, I would listen to worship. I would seek him with all of my heart. And then I would ask him why. And then he would just, I would just have this peace. And then he would come home with a smile and say, oh, babe, this is what happened. This is what I did. And I was able, and when I was hearing what he was going through, and that was comforting enough for me to say, wow, I'm, I'm being selfish. So, ladies, if you're out there and your husband or your spouse is serving a lot more at church than at home, don't trip potato chip. <laughs> God knows just exactly how much you need him home or her. <laughs> you, you know, um, real quick, I'm going to touch on that because I think it's so important what you just said. Why do I say that is because I'm married. There's a lot of young couples out there that are married who do have that issue where, hey, my husband is always at church and this and that. And it's tough, you know. And I love that you are able to share that. And, 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 and that's why I'm so grateful that you guys are here today because I think that as young people we can learn from you guys. You know, how long have you been married? 22 years. 22 years. Come on, somebody. That's Almost 23. Yeah. yeah. Next month. You know, and, uh, and, and it's, I saw, I, you know, it's crazy because, you know, people, and even my wife itself is like, you know, they do say that, oh, you know, you don't do that at church or why are you there so much? But, and, and they need to hear from a person that's been there of, you know, it's, it's, it's a call that, um, you know, of course we want to be home with our kids and with our wives, but, but it's also a call for people. And, 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 and this is hard, you know, like, because you don't want to disappoint your kids. You don't want to disappoint your wife. So I love that you touched on that. Oscar, uh, before you go, can I just like, yeah, absolutely. Can I just jump on on um, what my wife was saying? In all of the grace that she was giving me to do what I was asked to do, what I also learned from this weekend's message was when you dream again, what you do is you build new foundations. So it doesn't, your new season doesn't have to be, and it shouldn't be built on an old foundation. It should be built on a new foundation. And even us OGs, 22 years married, you know, 21 in the church, we're finding a brand new foundation to build on. Because seasons in our lives, and you guys know, seasons in our lives change all the time. And so you have to build upon a new foundation. And the beauty of what's happening now is that Pastor Abe and Crystal have allowed us to start to build a new foundation. And the fact that she's here with me tonight is one of the pillars of this new foundation. Yeah, I, yeah. 
I have not been able to do this. I have not been able to experience. That's why I'm like this. Oh, oh, yeah, she's so, yeah, she's so yeah. cool. So, yeah, build on new foundations. No, and, and, and I love that. And, um, and Josh, I'm going to get to you. I have some great questions for you. But um, <laughs> I love that because let's be real. You know, uh, when it comes to ministry, when it comes to serving God and, and, and your wife is not next to you, it's tough. You know what I mean? Because it almost feels like you're in two battles, you know. Um, you're trying to do the good for people. You're trying to go out there and fight the good fight. But then your wife always has that way of saying, mm, well, you ain't doing it. So I love that and that you both are here because you guys are what we as young people look for. And in, in for examples, and especially in marriage, you know, like there's a lot of times in my marriage I suck. I need people like you to say, hey, Oscar, maybe you need to chill. You know what I mean? Um, so thank you so much for sharing. And it's so important for the church and for people to hear. And that's a new foundation. Yeah. To even think that way is a new foundation for, for you, for, for any of us. To consider, hey, the church is important, but we're learning in this new season on this new foundation that Pastor Abe and Crystal have us building on that the most important part of church is your home. Yep, come on. And, and like, like seriously, like I'm, I, I'm taking away new things in this new season on this new foundation that I overlooked and my old foundation was cracking and God through our pastors have allowed me to go, no, I can dream again and I can build a new foundation yeah. and my life doesn't have to be like it was, although it got me to where I'm now, but I can build on a new foundation yeah. and I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, Josh, you know, Josh. big Josh. Josh, you're awesome. You're in the worship team. Thank you. I love you. I love your brother. I love your family. You guys are so dope. Um, you know, Pastor Abe talked about how we are called, that we're not called to look like other Christians. We're called to look like Jesus. And one of the things I want to ask you as a young man, a young, you know, um, a young man in the faith is how do we as a church and how do you are able to encourage other people your age, whether in your school, with your circles of influences, to begin to talk to people about church? Like, how do you do it? That's, thank, that's a really good question. And uh, I just wanted to touch again on what you first said, where Pastor Abe mentioned that uh, we might not all look the same, but we're called to, to serve Jesus Christ, right? So that's kind of what I use when I'm encountering young people and trying to bring them to church is that I remind them that, yes, I might not look like you and the people you're gonna see at church might not look like you, but we're not there for the people we see, we're there for Jesus Christ, right? We all look the same in the eyes of the Father. And um, how we look and uh, a lot, and there's been a lot of racial issues in the country today. So how we look has been something that has been dividing the country, but uh, it's really good that Pastor Abe touched on. It doesn't matter what you look like because in Jesus Christ, we're all the same. Yeah. It doesn't matter what color, what your hair looks like, how young or old you are. We're all the same in the Father. No, that's good, man. That's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, you know, for sharing that. And I agree with you. Um, and this is why I love that Pastor Abe, you know, is preaching about the series of the blueprint, about building the house, about building a church that looks like God's heart, because that's the key, and that's what we need. You know, a lot of times we, we think that we come to church and we have to look like someone or do something, but that's not true. You know, God is here. God called us where we're at. He's, he's not looking for your skinny jeans or <laughs> anything like that. So I love that you said that. I, also, I think that's when a lot of the um, distraction from Jesus comes into church. It's when I try to look like you. See, if I say, oh, I want to get tattoos just like him. I want to dress just like him. I want to look just like him. I forget that I'm trying to look like Jesus, yeah. right? So then I become, oh, I want to be like Pastor Abe. I want to I wanna be like Oscar, but I forget that they're trying to be like Jesus. Yeah. So if I really want to be like these people that I idolize or become role models for me, what are they trying to look like? All right, and that's when you realize that he's trying to look like Jesus. Yeah. And that's more powerful than trying to look like someone else. That's good. Come on, come on. For all you young people out there hearing this, come on, somebody. We better see you here on church on Sunday, 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. <laughs> come on. Um, you know, Pastor Rape talked about only you can build what God has called you to build. I've learned this, and obviously I haven't been, I'm not an OG 
like you guys are an OG. But I'm not saying you're old. I'm just saying you're an OG. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, you know, when it comes to, you know, a lot of, you know, so people come to church and they think that you have to build on somebody else's calling. And that's a big, big no-no. You have your own calling and you have your own purpose. And, and we have to be able to discern that, you know. Right. Um, I want to I ask Pastor Mark, you know, again, you've been around for a long time. Um, and you're what I consider a, a very respectful person, honorable pastor. And I want to ask you this, you know, what is God calling you to build after all these years? Yeah, that's a great question. That's an awesome question because um, to reiterate briefly what I had spoken about just a minute ago was that I was trying to build on a broken or an old, let's just say an older foundation, right? And I was getting checked in the spirit uh, and through the messages and hanging out with people about trying to um, do what we had done before in this new season. And the, the, the thing that I kept hearing God say to me is, Mark, you, I'm reminded that I'm not here because of what I do. I'm not here because of what I know. I'm here because of who I am in this season. Now, will I do? Absolutely. Do I know some stuff? Yeah, I know some stuff. But God through prayer, through our pastor, has really challenged me to build new upon who I am. Because I can move 100 chairs, but God would rather have me move 100 people. Yeah. yeah. Disciple 100 people and move them to Christ or move them into their next. And so that's the new that I'm building. It's tough because an old dog, you know, is doing old tricks. And, and I'm learning some new tricks. And, you know, praise the Lord that we have a, a, a great opportunity in the name change in the new church era to do that. Yeah. And that's why I'm excited yeah. again. I, you can tell, like, yeah. I'm fired up again about church. No, yeah, that's awesome. You know, I'm excited with you. Um, you know, I get I sit with Pastor Abe and I sit with a lot of the leaders and, and it's just the fire um, that we get it. That it's about people. And, and, and again, you know, I just want to say to people, like, church's not easy. You know, it, you don't come and, and. If it and, was, everybody would be doing it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Je like Jesus didn't die because we're perfect. Jesus died because we're all sinners and we're all going to fall short. And, 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 and I want people to know that, like, we have to have grace for each other, especially in leadership. You know, you always hear about, like, oh, they don't call me or, or whatever it is. But, that, that, you know. It, it goes both ways, you know what I mean? And, and people need to understand that. And that's why, you know, we learn from you guys. And I want to have a question for you guys as a, you know, as a married couple. Um, you know, what advice do you give young married couples as they begin to build their home, their faith, and their children? One advice that I definitely was able to grasp pretty early was balance. Balancing not only in ministry, but at home. I think that once you find what balance is, you'll be able to run so much farther together than when, if you're trying to compete. Yeah. So I think, and, and I don't mean compete like, well, okay, I do mean compete like that. <laughs> I remember when we first started coming to church, uh, my husband was invited to Manpower, with uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Oh, come on. And I was like, excuse me, I got a girl, I got to do a girl thing. So he's so kind and never challenged, never competing. Oh, babe, there's actually a ministry for women. It's called Women That Were Loose. And I said, great, I'm going to go. But I was competing with him because I was saying, oh, he's going to get really word he's gonna get fed up he's i mean he's gonna get fed and i'm gonna be home deprived i'm gonna be upset uh, i need i need some jesus in me and ended up being that i ended up going but he didn't because his uh there was something he didn't go there was a conflict and he wasn't able to go that time but i remember that when i it was important for me to go it was my timing but with that i don't think i would have ever known how to have balance 
because they really empowered us as women and as we pretty much are holders of our home. And if they come home and we are upset or if we are out of control, then what ends up happening is that we end up having a whole um, disorder. There's just, there's just resistance. And when we don't have balance, everything is going to go out of control. So I really want to say as a married couple, my husband has been able to really level me, balance me, um, guide me through, and, and just be submissive. And that doesn't mean that he has more power. It just means that I'm, I'm willing and able to follow my husband because I know who he's following. And when I know who he's following, my whole heart goes out with that. Wow, that's awesome. I love that you said that because I agree with you 100%. And I'm learning this now, balance. You know, how to balance the home, how to balance the kid. I mean, I have, I have five kids. Come on, somebody. <laughs> that's five characters. It's, it's, it's another level. Can I go in there? <laughs> so, you know, balance, and, and I love it, and I'm learning that. And, and, and the, you know, when you say that, it kind of tells me, Oscar, you're good. You're, you're learning, you know, the balance. Um, Josh, back to you. Um, you know, again, you're young. You're ready. Um, and how do you build? Like, what are, you, what are your dreams, and, and what are your goals? Um, as, a, as a young person, um, that's kind of one of the – that's kind of one of the things we're, we're, all, we're trying to figure out, you know, at this age, going to college, you know, changing my majors three or four times, you know, so I'm trying to figure out what exactly I'm, where I'm trying to navigate my life to. But that's why I think it's so important to have a foundation because um, a lot of times um, maybe, I remember when I first started going to college, I was there for kinesiology. And then a couple, the next semester, I changed to sociology. And now I'm in the law pathway. I'm a law student. So um, just seeing how from year to year I've changed, but still keeping a strong foundation in whatever, like you guys said, building a new foundation in your new season. So uh, whatever you're going to, whatever you're building or whatever God is calling you to build, it's always important to have a firm foundation in that, in that season. Because if you don't, then uh, like everything gets tested. And like Pastor Abe said, um, everything is going to go through the fire, regardless what you build it out of. So if you build it out of paper and you're not that strong, yeah. Yeah. And it's just going to burn. Yeah. But if it's built out of gold, <clears throat> gold will melt, but you still have gold, which is much valuable than having burnt up paper. Yeah. So building a strong foundation to me um, in the times where I might not be too sure where I'm going or what exactly God is calling me to do, just have, making sure that my foundation stays strong regardless where I go, makes me know that I'm moving towards something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so good. You know, earlier you mentioned, you know, you know, the racial tension and so many things that are going on, um, so many things that blow my mind, to be honest with you. But how do you silence the noise? You know, how do you, in a world full of distractions and a world that seems that it keeps trying to pull our young people, how do you, you know, silence those voices? I mean, it's definitely not easy. It's not easy at all uh, with everything that's going on, reading about it, seeing it in the news. It, uh, it definitely gets to you. And as a person of color, it definitely gets to me. Um, sorry, <laughs> getting a little choked up. But um, I remember uh, when I first started coming to this church, I was sitting right over there, and uh, Pastor Georgina was actually giving the message. And it was during altar call, and everyone stood up, and I was wearing a gray suit. And she pointed out, it's like, hey, you in the gray suit, God is telling me that you're running away from something. So stop running away from, God, from what God is calling you to do. And literally, I couldn't, I couldn't help but hold back the tears. I just started crying and bawling. And since that day, I've been coming, that's what made me come stay at this church. It made me join the worship team, join Uprising, whatever I could do just to stay in this house I did because someone else I, I it wasn't like Pastor Georgina was talking to me it was much more than that I felt like like God was saying hey I see you don't hide anymore right so I needed that conviction like hey everyone knows that you're hiding so what are you gonna do so you know so just knowing that like 
you can't hide from God's call. Yeah. yeah. Wherever you run to, he's yeah. going to find you. So yeah. just just go on and submit. That's so awesome, and and I, oh, you know, I'm I'm 39 years old. Um, I know I don't look it, but I'm 39 years old, um, and I love you know uh, hearing the young voices as well as the people that have been around for a while, and it's so amazing how we're all dreaming the same. You know, I sat with my 18 year old and my 16 year old yesterday, and to hear him dream, and to they sat with me with their Bibles, saying, "Dad, we need our Bible study," and and, and it's so amazing to and I and I in my mind I'm like God I don't even deserve this you know what I mean I was like and 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 it's a trip you know but Pastor Mark what is you know when the Bible when Paul talks about being a master builder what does that mean when he says be a master builder I think I'm gonna defer to my wife because I think she was studying this hmm. and I want I want okay. you to kind of share what what you <laughs> what what is a master babe Go ahead. Well, it's interesting because I really was intrigued when Pastor Abe repeated that and it really spoke out to me. So I was like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to look up the definition of master. And a master is a noun, a person with the ability or power to use, control or dispose of something. Yeah. When I read that, I really felt that Wow, we have power. We have power. And I remember having um, someone spoke to me and said, you know, your word is your possibility. What possibilities are you walking forward with? What are you walking for? So having him say, uh, really defining the word master really spoke like really heavy to me because I've always felt I'm not the right person, I'm not able, I'm not enough. And there's just so many doubts that I would constantly say about me. I'm not a leader. Um, you know, there's so many labels that I've I've had to remove. Yeah, yeah. So having Pastor Abe say that yesterday and then reminded us to dream again, or in myself, it reminded yeah, me to dream, yeah. I just... I was just very impelled to that. So that's all I had really, baby. Isn't it, isn't it crazy, though, how most extroverts are really introverts? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Right? And, and, they, and they, they are finding themselves, um, because they're introverts, they're doing more than um, the normal would do to be extroverted. She's been doing, you know, fitness forever since she was 17. So that was only like 10 years ago. <laughs> but, but, 33. Yeah. But isn't it crazy how when you consider who the master builder is, right? And then two weeks ago, we learned about how, how we find a home in God and God finds a home in us, yeah, right? Yeah. But when we, when we realize who the master builder is, because 1 Corinthians 6.19 says that do you not know that the Holy Spirit, you know, your body is the residence of the Holy Spirit, then I am the master builder as well. And then I can have power. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the deeper we want to get, the more simpler it becomes. It all goes back to Jesus. Yeah. Be like, talk like, associate like, you know, like Jesus. And yeah. so being a master builder is really about someone who has the power but knows the basics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it doesn't yeah. matter how many yeah. verses you know and memorize. Yeah. If you can walk one of those things out, you're a master builder in that verse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that, that's no, what that, I meant that, to me. That's, that's good. One of the things that you said that I love is that when you feel like you're not called, or I mean you, when you feel like <clears throat> because that is exactly where you're, when you know that God has something for you, and, and it's, you know, I felt the same way you did when I first met Pastor Abe and he told me, hey, chill with me, you know. And I was like, nah, Pastor, I can't do that. And he's like, no, nah. because I told him the same thing. And he told me this. I'm not going to get into it, but he told me a story, um, you know, about the Pharisees and what used to happen. And, and, and yesterday my son said the same thing to me like, Dad, like, how can I deserve this? I don't deserve this. I'm this. And I go, let me tell you the same story somebody told me. So I love that. It's because it's because when you're 
when you feel that is when I know God is going to use you in powerful, powerful ways. Um, and I love that. I love what you said too, you know, like dreaming again, right? We ha- and I believe that the church and what God is about to do, not just with heart revolution, but with God people, God's people is the dream again. The going back to the fundamentals, going back to the word, going back to love, going back to really listening, really discipling, and, and, and really opening our hearts to people. And that's why I love so much that Pastor Abe and Pastor Crystal and the message of the blueprint is in my heart. Because Heart Revolution is a church of the blueprint. That we don't go away from what's real. The fundamentals of Jesus. We don't look to no one or to no man. We look to Jesus. And to hear Pastor Abe talk about that, it fires me up. And in a world that is so much going on, we're there and we're answering the call. And we're behind Jesus. We're behind Pastor Abe. And it's just so awesome. You know, and before we close, like, I want to ask all three of you, you know, what message do you have for people and how would you invite those people in to our home, to your home, in here, and here, and all over? A really good point that Pastor A made uh, was only you can build what God has called you to build, right? So in a way, uh, we all have our own, our own journey and what we're trying to build, and we're all building something different from each other so what you're trying to build is not what i'm trying to build and what i'm trying to build is different from your from what you're trying to build and i think it's important that uh we we let people know that that we're all building something different but we're building together right so it's it's easy to build i mean it's it's a lot easier to build something together than it is alone Right, even though we're building something different, just having the camaraderie and just doing life with people that are moving towards the same goal is a lot easier than doing it by yourself. Okay, <laughs> she wants to go last. Yeah. Um, I, I think the the one thing that I would say, and again, I'm I'm relearning, um, is when you're rebuilding, be yourself. And I know that sounds simple, but in mega church mentality, and we touched on it a little bit earlier, but in a mega church mentality, the 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 thought of being different can be very scary. It can be, no, I want to be like them because everybody else is like them. That's not the church that Heart Revolution is becoming. Be yourself. Don't try to hyper-spiritualize anything. Don't try to uh, speak or act larger or, than where, you're, where your life is at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get tempted to put yourself in debt to get the new Jordans. Don't do that. Be yourself. Yeah. And, and the last thing I'll say about being yourself is this Sunday, I was nervous about coming to church in shorts. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, <laughs> but I came to, I said, I'm not on stage, right? So for the first time in 21 years, I came to a Sunday service in shorts and chanclas. <laughs> and more people were looking at me like, that's kind of cool. <laughs> the executive pastor is in shorts and chanclas. So I'm learning myself to be myself be mark yeah and and that's what people are going to be attracted to because i'm following christ and that's good to be me. so next week if you want to show up in shorts and chanclas, shorts and chanclas yeah blame pastor mark it, if man. you get in trouble right just don't wear a chargers jersey oh here we go oh, here we go oh man i have to agree with what both of them said and i think one of the things that i want to build is a legacy Uh, for my children. Uh, I know that building a legacy for my next generation sounds too big, but it's so beautiful seeing my daughter, seeing my kids coming to church and just loving God and just falling in love and just, you know, it, it it was something that 
it's a quiet prayer, I believe, that every parent has to see their children raising their hands and yeah. just yeah. adoring God. So I think that's one of the legacies that I definitely want to yeah. continue to dream for. But another thing that I've been really um, having a dream and a passion for is the women of you know, our daughters at Heart Rev. Come on. I know that there is... Um, there's so much power in unity and women, for some reason, we we're tough. <laughs> yeah. Especially we, Latinas. Hi, Latinas <laughs> is like, <"Arr." laughs> and I think once we're together, oh my goodness, we are adorable. We are just comadres. We're just having great time. We're girlfriends. And I think that's something that it has really been um, an effort for me totally out of my comfort, yeah. but thank you for letting me embrace you. Those are in my life group. Uh, I'm really trying to build this relationship and trying to dream of having girlfriends. Yeah. I, I have a story about that, but I'll say that for another day. <laughs> but definitely building that is something that I'm able to give myself permission to do that because I know that his hand is on me. Wow. That is so awesome. Thank you, all of you, for sharing your hearts. For everybody out there watching, thank you so much for being part of The Breakdown. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Also, remember, this is your house. Mi casa es tu casa. We love you. We can't wait to meet you. Church, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m. in Spanish. I love you. Let's go. Let's go.